performances on 13 is made possible in part by Movado. Next, drama returns to great performances with a little panache. Kevin Klein triumphs as Cyrano de Bergerac, the honorable swordsman who hides his love behind his dominant prose. This nose precedes me everywhere, a quarter of an hour in front, to say, beware, don't love Cyrano to even the ugliest. Jennifer Garner shines as the beautiful Roxanne in her Broadway debut. Oh, but his curls are the curls of a Greek god. There's a chance that his brain may be curly, too. Daniel Sunjata completes the triangle as Christian, the handsome yet simple soldier. I want to be loved for what I am, comely and dumb, or else not loved at all. <laughs> Join us for a swashbuckling evening of poetry, chivalry, and romance. I love you beyond the limits that love sets himself. I love, I love. From Broadway, Cyrano de Bergerac. Great Performances is brought to you by the Irene Diamond Fund. This program is also made possible by the National Endowment for the Arts because a great nation deserves great art. Vivian Milstein, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. like mine for a, a woman without a name. Lemonade, macaroon. You'll know her. I'm afraid. Afraid she'll be coquettish, exquisite. Afraid to speak and show my lack of wit. This smart new language they all speak and write eludes me. All I know is how, how to fight. A soldier conquered by two enemies, shyness and love. I must know who she is. Wait till she comes. She's bound to come. No, no. Thirst waits for no man. I'm sorry, I must go. I have the whole of Paris to swim through. Orange age. Oh, God. Milk? My sweet young dairymaid. I was weaned a long, long time back. Muscadel. Very well. <laughs> Christian, I'll stay a while. Ah, Linier. <laughs> An introduction. Not under the table yet. May I present Baron Christian de Nouvellet. Enchanté. A stranger to Paris. I have been here rather less than three weeks. I'm joining the guards. Ah. Ah, Ragano! Uh, this is the man who lets you eat and own if you're a poet. <laughs> Where's Cyrano? That man's not much of a theater goer. Oh, he's got to be here. Got to be? Montfleury's performing. So? 
Cyrano's warned him, oh, surely you know, to quit the stage on pain of his displeasure for a whole month. This Cyrano, what is he? Uh, uh, he is his friend, Le Bray, he can tell you. Oh, God, Monk, what is performing? Well, you're looking for Bergerac. I'm worried. Is he so extraordinary, this Bergerac? Exquisite, one of the world's prodigy. Poet, fighter, musician, physician. Ah, his appearance, though. Isn't that truly bizarre? Bizarre, excessive, hyperbolic, <laughs> droll, with his triple waving plume, his visible soul. This is Cyrano de Bergerac. Cocky, insolent, gaskety proud he goes, flaunting that punchinello strawberry nose of his. A nose, gentlemen, that makes one feel like squealing. Oh, God, no, it can't be real. It must be detachable. Yes, I'm prepared to bet. But Cyrano has never been known to detach it yet. But he doesn't seem to be coming. Yeah, well, he'll be here in a minute or so. Ah, look at her. How unbearably beautiful. So fresh, so cool. Ah, so that's the one. Yes, yes, yes. Who? Tell me. Oh, my knees are knocking. Second name, Raban, known as Roxanne, though christened Madeline. Roxanne. Delicately reared. Bookish. Bookish. Oh, no. Still single. An orphan. A cousin to Cyrano. Who's that with her? That's the Comte de Guiche. Complete with cordon bleu. <laughs> yeah, he's totally smitten with her, but irreparably wed to the niece of none other than Cardinal Richelieu. If he can't marry Roxanne, he proposes to hitch her instead to a certain unpleasant vicomte. There he is, Val Vare. And the vicomte's obliging, so the geese will push in there if you catch my meaning. Good as dead. Let me hurl it in his face. Oh, whose face? This vicomte de Val Vare. Oh, idiot. Small stuff like you. He'll eat you in canapes. Stop it. <laughs> See? She's looking at you. Oh, heavens, it's true. <laughs> at me, at me. Oh, God, she's looking at me. So, me and my thirst will be the ones to go. No, Cyrano. I can't understand it. Oh, it's possible he hasn't seen the playbill. Miguel! Miguel! Ow! Ow! It's quite a crush tonight. We're practically in one another's pockets. So I see. Ow, 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 if you let me go, sir. I'll let you into a secret. Secret? What? What? That Linier, him who's just left, he's not got more than an hour to live. He wrote a song attacking one of these gents and who's sending along a hundred men to get him. I'm one, that's how I know, you see. Where will they be? At the Port de Nel. It's on his way home, you see. You'd better get a message to him. Cowards. A hundred men against one poet. Oh, to have to leave just when I found her. Him, her, she. He, Lanier comes first. Where the hell will he be? seem to say that fool i ordered you to stay away it's him god help us all balloon baboon buffoon <laughs> for the space of one revolving moon i ordered him to rest you hesitate get off that stage. Don't let him intimidate you, Montfleury. Hey! Yeah. Hey. 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 Far from the court and city. Ah, how good. 
You see this stick, you clown? I'll plant a wood, splinter by splinter, over your rich terrain. Far from the sort and kitty. Yet again, you disobey. Please, gentlemen, help me. Oh, carry on acting. Not for four more weeks. One word more, and I lambast his shivering cheeks, all four of them. <laughs> Enough. Back in your seats, you mooing marquises. This is too much. Continue, Mulfury. Discontinue, rather. Off! Off! You awful. Lug your guts away, you salami. <laughs> Very well, then. Stay, and I'll remove you. Slice by slice. Monsieur, in insulting me, you insult the tragic muse. <laughs> now, consider my poor scabbard, please, I pray. She loves my sword and wants my sword to stay inside her. <laughs> Off that stage, a beat, a bray. Do any of you have anything to say? Good. Let me say this. I want something desperately simple. To see the stage rid of this carbuncle, this abscess. And if the flux won't go of its own free will, well then, the lancet. Mine. Buffoon, are you here still? Please don't presume too much on my good humor. I'll clap my hands three times, you moon of a man. On the third clap, eclipse yourself. <laughs> Ready? One. Aye, aye. It seems to me a part of two salaries. This is irregular. This is irregular. I demand a few words from the head of the company. Yes. Yeah. have no bravos. The distinguished thespian, whose paunch you love so much, has had to go. He's scared. Be charitable. Say he's a sick man. <laughs> but what are your reasons, sir? Why do you show such enmity towards Montfleury? Young ninny. <laughs> Ass or oaf, whichever you prefer. This Montfleury of yours is a deplorable mouther, mincer, Moaner, posturer. And how about all the cash we have to give back? Mr. Jodelet is right. Money matters. Let it never be said that Bergerac wished to see Thespis's robe grow full of tatters. Here, take that. And off. <laughs> if you'll guarantee a sack of loot like this, uh, I'm ready to guarantee to let you shut the theater every night. Oh! Even if we get hissed and booed for it. All oh, right, all right. Let's. Clear the hall. It's mad. Yes, mad. That very famous actor has his grace the Duke of Kandal as protector. Do you have a patron? No. I'm protected just the same. This is my patroness. You'll have to go. You can't stay here in Paris. No? You honestly think you can do the Duke of Kandal harm? It's possible. As for you, please turn your toes the other way. What? Uh, left, incline, or right, and thus reoriented, walk. <laughs> or tell me why you're looking at my nose. Oh, uh, really, I, um... Unusual, is it? Really, I try not to look at your nose, sir, really. Why? Does it disgust you? No, 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 not at all, not at all. Too lurid, is it? Oversized? It's small. I mean, uh, it's uh, beautifully it's small. It's minute. It's minuscule. Compound your insolence with ridicule, would you? My nose is small, eh? Small? Oh, God. My nose, sir, is enormous. Ignorant clod, cretinous moron. A man ought to be proud, yes, proud, of having so proud an appendix of flesh and bone to crown his countenance, provided. A great nose may be an index of a great soul, affable, kind, endowed with wit and liberality, courage and courtesy, like mine, you rat-brained dunce, and not like yours, a cup of rancid 
porridge. <laughs> to fist such nothingness would be grotesque, so take a boot instead on your backside. He's a bit of a bore. A braggart in very bad taste. Only a pig of a plebeian would sprout a snout like that. So, may we leave it to you? Yes, you can leave it to me. That thing of yours is big. What? Very big. Precisely what I was saying. Ha! <laughs> That's all? Nothing more? Come, come, sir. There are 50 score varieties of comment you could find if you possessed a modicum of mind. For instance, there's the frank, aggressive kind. If mind achieved that hypertrophic state, I'd call a surgeon in to amputate. <laughs> the friendly. It must dip into your cup. You need a nasal crane to hoist it up. <laughs> the pure descriptive. Uh, from its size and shape, I'd say it was a rock, a bluff, a cape. No! A peninsula. <laughs> the gracious. Are you fond of birds? How sweet. A gothic perch to rest their tiny feet. Oh, there's the pedant. Let me see it, please. That mythic beast of Aristophanes, the hippocampo camel elephant, had flesh and bone like that stuck up in front. <laughs> the warlike. Aim it at the enemy. <laughs> Dramatic. When it bleeds, it's the Red Sea. <laughs> and finally, with tragic cries and sighs, the language finally wrought and deeply felt, oh, that this too too solid nose would melt. <laughs> this is the sort of thing you could have said if you, Sir Moron, were a man of letters. Or had an ounce of stunk inside your head. But you've no letters, have you? Save those three reserved for self-description. F-O-P. But be quite sure you imbecilic nit, even if you possessed the words and wit, I'd never let you get away with it. Come away, we can't leave him. Arrogant, base, non-entity, without even a pair of gloves to his name, <laughs> let alone the ribbons and lace and velvet that a man of breeding loves. I'm one of those who wear their elegance within. <laughs> I smell of nothing but scrubbed liberty and polished independence. Gloves? You mentioned gloves. You have me there. I have this one left over from a pair, an old, old pair. Its fellow I can't trace. I must have left it in some vicomte's face. <laughs> Cad, villain, clawed, flat-footed, bloody fool. Ah, and I'm Cyrano Sevigny, Hercule de Besnard. Enchanté. There. Would you be terribly bored if I composed a poem? <laughs> a poet, eh? Ah, yes. My lord, I'll improvise a ballad. A ballad. I'll explain. It's three eight-line standards and one quatrain. The envoy. Sir, thus my proposal goes. To fight and at the same time to compose a ballad of strict classical design and then to kill you on the final line. <laughs> No. Oh, no! Ballad of a fencing bout between de Bergerac and a foppish lout. Well, when you finished your doggerel recital... That was no doggerel, that was the title. <laughs> Wait! Let me choose my rhyme. Ape! That's one. Eel! Thank you. Ape, mate, cape, gape, grape, shape, eel, meal, field, deal, steel, wheel. I'm ready. <laughs> I bear my head from crown to nape, and slowly, leisurely reveal the fighting trim beneath my cape. And finally, I strip my steel. A thoroughbred from head to heel disdainful of the rain or bit. Tonight, I draw a lyric wheel. But when the poem ends, I hit. Come and be burst, you purple grape. <laughs> 
spurt out the juice beneath your peel. Shiver and show you ribboned ape. You're fat, you're bolder, old. Come to feel. Let's ring your bell. The pretty feel. Is that a fly? I'll see to it. Run. <laughs> Soon you'll feel your blood congeal. <laughs> For when the power ends, <laughs> I hit. Ah! <laughs> ah. I need a rhyme to hold the shape. Gape, fish, I'm going to wind the reel. The rod is lusting for its razor. The shark tooth slavered for its meal. Paint. Tragic stilts, two running sandals, sick transit. Lock up the doors and douse the candles. We're rehearsing a farce for tomorrow in a quarter of an hour or so. First, though, dinner. Ah. Will you want dinner? Me, no. And why not? No money. I see every sou you'd got. Oh, shall we say one glorious day of life for a month's pay? And how will you live the month out? I don't know. <laughs> a stupid act. Hmm? But what a gesture, no? Pardon, sir. I couldn't help it here. You mustn't starve. Take something, please. My dear, the pride of a Gascon, you must understand, forbids my taking from your lily hand the tiniest morsel. But rather than rebuff such kindness, just a grape. One is enough. No wine, just water. Half a macaroon. <laughs> this is stupid. Nothing more. Your hand to kiss. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Good night. Uh, well, now at last we are able to talk. Dinner is on the table. Main course. Drink, dessert. Strangely, I find I've quite an appetite. So, what's on your mind? Listen, 
These jingling fops with their bellicose airs are starting to twist and torture your ideas of gentlemanly behavior. Ask anyone of sense what they think of these carrions on. Delicious. The Cardinal. He was here. Richelieu is bound to find that sort of thing. Mon Dieu. Have some sense. Can't you understand? Your enemies are multiplying. The latest figure is? By my count, 48. Enumerate. Oh, mon fleury. The Vicar, his remnants, I mean. The author's friends, that frightful de Guiche, of course. The Academy. Delightful. This life of yours. <laughs> Where will it lead you to? What system is it based on? Hmm? Bumbling through in aimless complication, forced to play too many parts. That was my old way. But now what? I'm going to take the simplest approach to life of all. Simplest and best, best is the word. I've decided to excel in everything. <laughs> I let that pass. Now, tell me, please, the thing I really want to know, your true reason, true mind, for this show of hate for Montfleury. That paunch, that maw, too fat to scratch his navel with his paw, believes he's a sweet danger to the ladies. Mm. Even when mouthing tragedy, He's made his frog's eyes into sheep's eyes of fat lust. I've seen him. And I've choked down my disgust until one night, one victim that he chose, oh, a slug slithering over a white rose. One lady. Yes. I was in love with. No, God knows I am in love with. But you never said one word. How could he know? How could anyone? Absurd, isn't it? This nose precedes me everywhere, a quarter of an hour in front, to say, beware, don't love Cyrano, to even the ugliest. And Cyrano now has to love the best, the brightest, bravest, wittiest, the most beautiful. Beautiful, my God, who is it? She's a mortal danger without knowing it, undreamed of in her own dreams, exquisite. The unwary eye that sees her smile sees pearled perfection. She can knit grace from a twine of air. The heavens sit in every gesture. Of divinities, she's most divine. Not Venus, nor the fair Diane. I see, my friend. There's no ban on uttering her name, your cousin's name, Roxanne! Let not the shame of the dusty air besmirch it. Oh, absurd! This is the finest news I ever heard. Ha! You love her. Fine. So go and tell her so. Tonight, you're covered in a golden glow of glory in her eyes. This uh, gross protuberance, look at it. And tell me, what exuberance of hope can swell the rest of me? I'm under no illusion. Oh. Sometimes, bemused by the wonder of a blue evening, I follow with my eye under that silver glory in the sky some woman on the arm of a cavalier and dream that I too could be strolling there with such a girl on my arm under the moon. My heart lifts. I forget my curse. But soon, suddenly, I perceive what kills it all. My profile shadowed on the garden wall. My friend. Yeah. My friend, why should Providence allot such ugliness? Such loneliness. You're not crying. Oh, never, never that. To see a long tear straggling along this nose would be intolerably ugly. All right, not crying, but still sad. But your wit, your courage, they can earn love. Surely it was proved just now. The girl who offered you food, did her eyes show hate, revulsion? True. Well then, I saw her face, rock sand. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> During your duel, it was ghastly white. That skill, that courage got the girl. You're halfway there, now dare to speak. So she can laugh at this? Why, man, there's nothing I fear more in this world. Monsieur, there's someone here who would like a word with you. Her chaperone. 
I have a message. My lady would be glad if her brave cousin, as she puts it, would be good enough to meet her in private, as she puts it. She wants to meet me. She has something to say to you, so she says to me. She's going to early mass tomorrow, Sun Rock. She wants to know where she can see you afterwards. Oh, God, let me think. Where? I'm thinking where. Where? The shop of Michel Ragano, the pastry cook. Where? The shop of Michel Ragano, the pa In the Rue Saint-Honoré? Seven o'clock, she'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. Good night. <laughs> me. She wants to meet me. So, it's goodbye to misery! Whatever she wants, it means that I exist for her. So now, an accession of calm. Calm? With ten hearts beating within? Each arm as muscular as twenty my arteries. Thud with thunder! Lightnings jagging through my blood. I need an army meet for my defiance. So take away your dwarves. Oh. Bring on your giants! There. We're rehearsing. Oh, we're off. Thank God you're here. What? I got this note. A hundred men because of a song I wrote. I dare go home. You hear? A hundred men going to get me. Armed, a lot of them. When I go to the port d'Inev, my way home. Oh, let me stay in your place. A hundred men going to get me. <laughs> a hundred men. Tonight, you lay your head on your own pillow. Oh. I'll turn down your bed myself, I swear it. Now, get off your knees, pick up one of those footlights there. You, the witnesses of what I intend to do, come to, but please keep a safe distance. You mean you're going to fight 100 men? Certainly. Tonight, less than 100 would be far too few. Oh. <laughs> but why protect this? I expected you, Captain, to raise objections. This drunken sot! This. Drunken sot. Once did a thing as pretty as ever I saw. It happened here, in the city. Mass had just ended. He saw a girl he loved dip in the holy water font. He shoved his whole head in and drank the blessed love. It's a lovely thing to do. Yes, was it not? Sot. But a hundred men against one poor poet. Wow. Let's march. Oh, I must come and see you. Why not? All of you. Gentlemen of the orchestra, will you? Good! Oh, wonderful! Quick, my cloak! I need a wood! Gentlemen first, lady next. But, some twenty paces at the fore, I come alone. Save for this triple-waving plume, this proud panache. Nobody must presume to aid me in this fight. My fight. My war. One, two, three, doorman! Open up the door! Ah, Paris. Swimming through nocturnal mist. The rooftops draped in azure. Shyly kissed by an uncertain moon. Proscenium all dressed and ready for the scene to come. To the Port de Nil! To the Port de Nil! There was a question. Why do five score enemies seek to stick five score daggers in the back of one poor poet? Answer. Because they know this poor defenseless rhymer is a friend of Cyrano de Bergerac. What time is it? Six o'clock. Another hour. Oh, felicitations! <laughs> such skill, such power. I saw it all. Saw what all? Your duel in rhyme. He talks about it all the blessed time. Oh, that. The poem ended, and I hit <laughs> Such a synthesis of steel and style, such tricks, such tropes. The time? 30 seconds past six. <laughs> Rhyme and rapier. <laughs> Wonderful. The poem ended and I... Oh, shut up! <laughs> you, you, where and when did you get that? 
Oh, it's only a scratch. Patches, get some ointment. It's nothing, I tell you. Listen, I have an appointment here soon. Leave us alone, will you? Uh, alone? <laughs> I can't. You see my poets and you. That's right, for their first meal of the day. When I give you the signal, get them away. To write it on. Okay. Hey, try this. Ah, thank you. It once belonged to a swan. Ah. <laughs> What's that? A uh, sort of friend of my wife's. <laughs> Very fierce, so he tells me. Right. Right. Fold. Give it to her. Run. The time? Hmm? Oh, two minutes past. <laughs> Letter written a hundred times in my heart. It's ready enough. Why hesitate to start? Here come the gorgers! Oh, oh sorry, oh, Willie. We got held up by the crowd at the foot and now. Filling the rocket corpses, head to tail, laid in the morning mud. Uh, I counted eight. I think there were just seven. Do you happen to know who the hero of this massacre happens to be? Me? No. He split from the knave to the chaps, these eight, or seven, and sent off 93, screaming like cats. <laughs> Do you know? Perhaps. I love you. Blood, guts, brains, swords, pikes. Oh. Your eyes, your lips. Hats and cloaks as far as the kidneys of heaven. Oh, he must have been the devil himself. Oh. Fear makes me tremble when I look at you. Do we have any poems lately, Ragnar? There. That will do. No signature. <clears throat> End as begin with love. Then give it to her. I've done this little thing. It's a recipe in verse. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Madame, a word. What about? Tell me, is he laying siege, this musketeer? Now you look here. Your generous-hearted husband happens to be a friend of mine, and I will not let you ridicule him, cuckold him. If you think that. I do. A word to the wise, as the saying goes. Give him a slap on his nose. His nose? Yes, his, his nose. Pardon me, I was just... Let's go inside. It, it will be less distracting for the muse. Oh, to hell with the muse. Who first? Oh, blasphemy. So, out this letter comes if I can see the faintest wisp of hope. A word. Oh, two, if you like, monsieur. Are you fond of cream puffs? So long as there's more cream than puff. Good, go, madame. Commune with the rising sun. Masticate thoroughly. Don't come back till you're done. May that one hour of all the hours be blessed when you at last remembered I exist and came to tell me what? First, I must thank you for last night. That wretch, that fop you punctured, his patron is eaten up with what he calls love. De Guiche? De Guiche proposed that I should marry Valvere. A blasphemous disguise for his own, I see. That's one bad chapter, close. <laughs> I fought not for my nose, but your bright eyes. <laughs> the other thing is, I daren't mention it yet. I must see you first as you were, the almost brother you used to be when we were children together, playing in the park by the lake. How can I forget the summers you spent at Bergerac? When your swords were bulrushes. Yes, and the golden hair of your doll was corn silk. <laughs> Bean fields in the air, green plums. 
And perpetual playtime. Uh, puppies and mulberries. God, how I'm taken back. To when my wish was always your command. Short-skirted Roxanne. Oh, you used to be called Madeleine. Was I pretty? You were never exactly plain. Mm. I remember you'd climb a tree and hurt your hand and come running to me. And then I'd play the mother and all gruff and grown up, I'd say, well, how on earth did you manage to, oh no. How on earth? Let me see it. Let me see. <laughs> oh, even now at your age. A bit of rather rough play with some of the big boys down by the Porte de Nelle. Give it to me. Yes, Mama. Oh, playing indeed. Tell me, how many of these big boys were there? Oh, about a hundred. About a hundred. A hundred! Out with your story. Come now. Out with your story. If it is a story. If you dare tell it, yes? I do dare. How easily one conjures the scent of the past. Hmm. I'm breathing it. And you and I are home again. <laughs> So, listen now. <laughs> I'm in love with someone. Ah. With someone who doesn't know, doesn't suspect. Ah. Not yet, anyway. Ah. But he will know soon. Ah. He loves me, too, but so far, from a distance, timidly. Poor boy, too scared to speak. Ah. Can you say nothing but ah? <laughs> ah. <laughs> Give me back your hand. Oh, how hot it is. Feverish. <sighs> but I see love trembling on his lip. Ah. He's a soldier, and more than that, he's in your regiment. Ah. More than that, even, he's in your company. Ah. And such a man, intelligent, proud, brave, beautiful. Beautiful. Whatever's the matter? Uh, nothing. Uh... This fool of a scratch I got from the big boys. That's... Anyway, I love him. All that remains for me to say is that I've only seen him at the theater. Never met? Never spoken? Only with our eyes. Then how can you know? Oh, you know how it is. People talk in the Place Royale, gossip, as they walk under the lime trees. He's in the guards, you say. His name? Baron Christian de Nouvellette. He's not in the guard. Oh, yes, he is. As from this morning, under Captain Carbon de Castellano. How fast, how soon the knife can pierce our hearts. Oh, yes. My dear sweet child, think. Consider you who love fine words, eloquence, elegance. He may be a fool, a savage. Oh, but his curls are the curls of a Greek god. There's a chance that his brain may be curly, too. <laughs> That can't be true. My woman's instincts tell me otherwise. Those instincts often tell the biggest lies. Suppose he's a bore, a bore. What will you do? Well, then I suppose I shall have to die. So you brought me here to tell me this. Perhaps you'd be good enough to tell me why. Yesterday, someone said, oh, it frightens me. Somebody said that all your company are Gascons. Yes, all Gascons. <sighs> Oh, I see. It's a matter of our fiery Gascon pride to rip up any greenhorn from outside who gets inside. Is that what you heard? I'm scared for him. Not without cause. But you, you who dared so much last night, that brute, those brutes, everyone is so scared of you, I thought. <sighs> Your Christian shall not be thrown to the lions. For our friendship's sake, you'll protect him, defend him. You'll make him your friend. There's nothing finer than friendship. Promise. I promise. Don't let anyone fight jewels with him. God forbid. <sighs> Cyrano, I love you. <laughs> Tell me everything about last night. Sometime, won't you know I have to go? <clears throat> How I love you. Oh, and tell him to write. Yes, yes. Don't forget now. Oh, just think, a hundred men against my boy of the bulrush sword. When there's time, you must tell me. We're friends, aren't we? Yes. Yes. Tell him to write. 
you and a hundred men? Such courage. I've done better than that since then. <laughs> yes, yes, you love me. Eh? Captain. We've heard the story, but we want it from you. The cadets of the guards and half of Paris are all ready to get you drunk in the tavern across the way. Come on. I'd rather not. Hey there, hey! Our hero is suffering from a sort of crapula. Too much blood. Come over. Talk about popular. <laughs> So many friends. Well, how about Roxanne? Quiet! Monsieur de Guiche, with a message from the Cardinal. Who wishes to convey his necessarily impartial felicitations on your flamboyant bravery. <laughs> Are you one of these wild Gascals? That is so. One of us! Sir, these are the famous infamous. Share them. <laughs> Present them. <laughs> I obey your order. Huh. Go. We are the Gascony cadets. Captain Castel Jaloux, our chief. Braggers of brags, layers of bets. Hook our enemies on brochettes with blood as our aperitif. We are the Gascony cadets! Etc. Etc. It's fashionable for a gentleman's retinue to contain a poet or so. So, how would you like to join mine? I don't like retinues. You're proud, sir. You've noticed that, have you? Dangerously proud. Dangerous to myself? I think not, my lord. To others, well. <laughs> Look what we found on the street this morning. Fellows from the foul you put to flight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Very Ready for the trophy room. He'll be not too pleased with himself today. The scoundrel who hired the hirelings who were on your knees. I know who it was. Oh, yes. I know. I was the scoundrel. I don't use my own teeth for biting insolent poets. I leave it to hirelings to chew them up. Rather toothless hirelings. Cyrano, what would you like us to do with these? Boil them, broil them, bake them. There's plenty of grease on them. Monsieur might like to take them and return them to his friend. I want my chair. My porters. Now! I see you, monsieur. The chair and porters of Monseigneur the Comte Monsieur, have you read Don Quixote? Read it? I've practically lived it. <laughs> Ponder on the windmill chapter. Chapter 13. If you fight with windmills, they'll swing the heavy spars and spin you down to the mud or up to the stars ah <laughs> madame monsieur Done it again. Oh, stop growling. No. To be quite accurate, when a man has achieved an unprecedented ecstasy of excess, you can't say he's done it again. I did it on principle. Excess, you see, isn't excessive if it's been conceived on principle. My success is achieved only 
by excess. Oh, if you'd only stop trying to be the Three Musketeers and Don Christ Quixote rolled up into one, you'd make your way. You'd wing up to the top. Up to the top? What would you have me do? Seek out a powerful protector? Pursue a potent patron? Cling like a leeching vine to a tree? Crawl my way up? No, thank you. Fawn? Wine? For all that sticky candy called success? No, thank you. Seek favor, introductions, influence? No, 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 thank you. No, no, thank you. But to go free of the filthy world, to laugh, to sing, to dream, cocking my hat where I please, at a word, at a deed, at a yes or no, fighting or writing. This is the true life. So I go along any road under my moon, careless of glory, indifferent to the boon or bane of fortune, without hope, without fear, writing only the words down that I hear here. I loathe the parasitic vine curled about the oak trunk. I myself am a tree, not high, perhaps, not beautiful, but free. My flesh deciduous, but the enduring bone of spirit, tough, indifferent, and alone. Alone, yes. Tough, yes. But indifferent, no. An indifferent man, God knows, doesn't go around as you do, seeking enemies. And you make friends. Mm -hmm. With all deference, is that gift not rather a canine one? <laughs> you love new friends. I'm happy to make new enemies. Oh, this is... I love hatred. <laughs> Hate is a heat that disinfects my soul. I understand, my friend. Be bitter, proud before your foes or the indifferent crowd. But tell me that she doesn't... Not so loud! Cyrano, tell us about it. Presently, the story of this combat ought to be a good example for this new one here. This new popped, unwiped wealth! This soft-boiled egg that's trickled down from Normandy. <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> Oh, pardon! A word in your ear, Monsieur de Nouvellette. There's a subject we're too discreet to mention. It would be like talking about rope in a house where a man has recently hanged himself. What subject? You mean Cyrano? I will you violate a ban merely by using the word. Most dangerous. He cleft a man asunder once. Just mention anything cartilaginous and... <laughs> if you want life's chronicle to be brief, you need do no more than take out your handkerchief. <laughs> Captain, Monsieur, what ought a man do when Gascons boast too much? You have to show that Normans have their share of bombast, too. Thank you, Captain. That's all I wish to know. The story! Let's the story! Tell us the tale of what really happened at the Fortunelle. <laughs> that could have been calam calam calamitous. Very well, then. My version. There then was the enemy. Here then was I marching toward them. Like a great clock in the sky, the moon pulsed out at me. But suddenly I saw pass a cotton wool cloud across it, like an angel cleaning her looking glass, and night fell equally black on me as well as my lurking foes. So black that a man couldn't see even as far as his nose. <laughs> who is that man there? He's a new man who came this morning. This morning? This morning. This morning? His name is Christian de Nivellet. Ah! <laughs> Uh, ah, well, uh, where was I? God knows. God bless! <laughs> yes, a, a cloud across the sky, uh, so black that a man couldn't see even as far as his toes, and I marched along, reflecting that in order to save this base, drunken poet, I might be spitting in the face of some great man, 
the prince even, well able to have at me right in the nose. Tea? <laughs> but still, imprudently, I marched. Why, though, should I stick my no. finger in that pie? <laughs> Was Gascon impetuosity a match for Parisian cunning? Could I, a Gascon, ever live down the ignominious running of my no. legs? <laughs> but I said to myself, on, on. Be brave. Do what has to be done. March, Cyrano, march. Then, out of the porridge thick blackness, came the first thrust and caught me a flick on the nose. <laughs> I parried and found myself nose to nose, face to face, <laughs> with a hundred hired ruffians. So I released the full flood of my boiling wrath. Screams of pain rang out. Then a sword came, shoot, and I responded. Achoo! <laughs> Out of here, everybody. Ah, out of here. Ah, ah, <laughs> Sleeping tiger wakes again. Oh, oh. Leave me alone with this man. Get off oh, the oh, ready. Oh, the bird, the the oh, 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 all of you, out, ah. out. You, out. Come to my arms. <laughs> Monsieur, you have courage. I like courage. I don't think I quite... I'm her brother. Whose brother? Hers. I don't think I quite... Hers. Hers. Roxanne's. Oh, my God, her brother. Near enough, what we call a fraternal cousin. <laughs> and she's... And she's... And she's Told me everything, yes. She loves me? Perhaps. Oh, I'm overjoyed to make your acquaintance. <laughs> this is what they call a change of heart. <laughs> forgive me, please, forgive me. You're a handsome devil, no doubt about that. If you only knew how much I admire you, sir. And how about all those noses? I take them back every single nostril. <laughs> Roxanne expects a letter from you tonight. Oh, no. What? I ruin everything if I write. How? Because I'm such a damned fool. The way you tackled me just now, that wasn't damned foolish. Oh, I can find the words when mounting an attack. Call it military wit. But I don't know how to mount an assault. The things to say, I mean, when it comes to a woman. I become paralytic, tongue-tied, speechless, dumb. That's explicit enough. If only I had the words. I have the words. If only I had the looks. You know her. Yeah, know her. Know that she's so exquisite, sensitive, one false word, and I'd blow any illusion she may have sky high. If only I had somebody like you, as interpreter, if I may put it so, of my dumb music. If only I had your wit, your eloquence. Well, why not borrow it? And in return, I'll borrow your good looks. There's promising algebra here. You plus I equal one hero of the storybook. I don't think so I I don't quite... see why I shouldn't give you words to woo her with. You give me words. Call it a lie, if you like. But a lie is a sort of myth. And a myth is a sort of truth. <laughs> We can't have Roxanne disillusioned. Let's start a fruitful collaboration. You frighten me. What scares you is the thought of the time when she and you are alone and you cool down her heart with breath unwarmed by words. But have no fear. My words will be with you, glued to your lips. What do you say? I say what I said at first. I, I don't quite... Understand, yes. Unsure about my motive. Simple. It's pure art. The finest lines of the dramatist are dead without the actor's partnership. One whole is made from our two halves. Your lips, my soul. I think I see. To you, it's not much better than a refined amusement. Still, I'm grateful. Oh, God, we have to start at once. The letter. You mean the letter. I have it right here. Complete except for the address. I don't quite. It will serve. Uh, <laughs> yes, an exercise in poetic wit. Poets who have no mistress but their muse often do this. I could serve you up a plateful any time. There. The more eloquent for being insincere. Will these words fit her? Like a pair of gloves. 
my dear, dear friend. In the name of God. Our devil changed into a Christian brother. Attack one nostril and he turns the other. <laughs> and so at last we can talk about... <laughs> Lise, come here, watch this. Mmm, <laughs> what a smell! Wine, some rare vintage. You with that sort of carrot, or shall we call it an inverted parrot appendage, seem equipped to sniff it well. What is it, do you think? Ah, ah. fresh tapped muscatel! <laughs> Natural, not be flat, you flat headed natural. Are you sure, monsieur? I'm sure, monsieur. Be natural. Be so kind. Is that Cyril, though? And sipping as the bee mouth sips, cut all them with my lip. I'm coming down. These infant prodigies, where did you find them? I won them in a wager on a point of Greek grammar with the academy. Thank God, I have them only for the day. <laughs> Gentlemen, do you know the house of Monsieur Montfleury? The fat actor? The fat actor. Go play for him. <laughs> Tell him I sent you. Play a sour serenade. Yes. Play uh, piercingly. Uh, play dissonantly. Play for a long time. <laughs> Madame. As usual, I've come to see if our flawless friend is maintaining his sublime height of flight. My Christian, he is beautiful, brilliant. I love him desperately. Brilliant? More brilliant even than you. I agree. I've never in my life known anyone who could say those little things so beautifully that are nothing, and yet everything. Oh, he says such things. Really? You think, as most men think, that it's impossible for a man to be both bright and beautiful. Talks well, does he, about love and so forth? No, talk is so inadequate. It's art. It's eloquence. Listen, the more you take my heart, the more heart have I left, dear heart, for loving you the more. Oh, God. And then, this ache of emptiness, however, bids me yearn to seek your heart, to fill it in return. First too much, then too little. How much heart does he need? Now you're teasing me. Jealousy, that's what it is. Jealous? I? Yes, of that talent of his. For the last word in tenderness, listen to this. Ah, in your presence, such confusion grips my heart that it grows wordless as a kiss. If kisses could but wing in winged words, then you could read my letter with your lips. Not bad. Not bad. A bit overwritten, though. But listen to this. You know them all by heart? He's so golden-tongued, such a master of his art. Oh, I don't know. It's sort of a verbal mist, a rhetorical fog. A master. If you insist. Madame, Monsieur de Guiche is here. <gasps> Quick, you, Monsieur Cyrano. He make for two and two together if he sees you here. Inside. 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 It's growing hard to hide our secret. He'll cut me down like a tree, if he so much as guesses. Monseigneur, I was just leaving. Alas, I am leaving too, for the war. Alas. This very evening, we've orders to besiege Arras. Alas. Arras. Tell me, does my leaving leave you as cold as it seems to do? Oh, no. I find the present prospect of leaving you leaves me quite Desolate. Oh, did you know I've been promoted, Colonel? Oh, bravo! <laughs> yes, Colonel of the Guards. The Guards. The Guards. The regiment of that man who's big in words and uh, the other thing. <laughs> Beastly de Bergerac. I may, with luck, get some of my own back. Order to Arras. 
Under my command. Oh, no. What is it? The flower in one's hand is so suddenly depeneled. This wind, this war, disperses all its perfume. One loves, and then... You've never, never spoken like this before. You say these things now for the first time when I have to leave you. <laughs> and you said just then something about revenge, my cousin. Ah, uh, yes. Are uh, you for him? Very much against. Tell me what you propose for Cyrano. Send him into the thick of the fighting? Ah, <laughs> he'll love that. I know what I'd do. What? Leave him here with his precious cadets, cooling his heels. That ought to make him sick while the rest of the regiment goes off and gets medals and wounds and things. <laughs> I know him. If you want to strike at him, strike at his self-esteem. Ah, woman, woman. Only a woman could dream up a scheme like that. <laughs> The cadets will chew their nails, but Cyrano will eat out his heart, and you'll have your revenge. You love me, then? A little. When you make my enemies your enemies, I'd like to see that as a sign of love. It could be the sign of a start. These are the orders for the company. Signed, sealed, not yet delivered. This is for the guards. I'll keep it. Cyrano! So much for you, you battle truffling swine. So you too, Roxanne. You like to play your little games. Sometimes. Sometimes I say to myself that you and I are two of a kind. But always, I'm mad about you. And now to find love trembling within you when I have to go, intolerable. Listen, half a mile or so from here in the Rue d'Orion, the Order of the Capuchins have the center of brotherly love under Father Athanasius. Accordingly to the rule, no layman may enter, but who can bar the nephew of Richelieu? The sleeves are wide enough to hide me. The regiment leaves for the siege tonight, but without me. One more day will make no difference. <laughs> Later on tonight, I'll come to you, masked. I apologize for mentioning the word, but honor. Eyes, spies will be watching if anyone should find out. Oh, say yes, say it now. No. Say it, whisper it. My duty is to make you do yours. But... Bless you for that. No, you must go. Go. I must make myself make you go. I must order you to be my hero. So you can love, can truly love. When I tremble for the safety of a man, I may talk of love. And yet you say I must go? Yes, in the name of love. <laughs> my dear, dear friend. I go then. This adieu is not an end, but a beginning. Later, then. Later, Roxanne. My dear, dear friend. Say nothing about what I did just then. If Cyrano finds out I stole his war from him. Oh, yes, yes. Cyrano, I must keep up appearances. We must still go to this discourse on the tender passion. All right. <laughs> when Christian comes to see me, tell him to wait. Wait. <laughs> well, wait. Uh, tonight, as usual, I suppose you'll have him dissertate upon a subject of your choosing. Monsieur de Vere's right. We are going in. Come on, madam. We're late. A subject. Subject. But you'll be quiet. Dumb as a wall. That's me. Nothing. No. Everything. I'll tell him to overwhelm me with excess, to rhapsodize, be brilliant on the subject of Naturally, love. Naturally, love. But, shh, not a word. Christian, come and have the lines thrown to you. I have your theme. All you have to do, you lucky, 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 is to get your memory ready. Tonight may be your best chance yet to cover yourself with genius. 
So come on, we haven't much time. Try to look intelligent. <laughs> no! There's no harm in trying to look intelligent. <laughs> oh, you mean... That's right, my friend. I mean to say that I'm going to stay here, going to wait for her. No, this is madness. This is the most head really vertiginous lunacy. Come, come on, sir. Come and, come and learn your lines. No, I'm feeling rebellious tonight. I'm tired, yes, tired of borrowing your lines, your letters, saying what you tell me to say, dithering with stage fright. Oh, it was fine at first. It was like playing a sort of game. But now, at last, tonight, I'm past all fear. Tonight, I feel inspired with my own inspiration. I no longer doubt that she loves me. My own words crash out. Come on. No. Although I can't yet make the verbal summits, I know enough to take by God a woman in my arms. Bravo. It's her. It's she. Don't leave me, Cyrano. You're on your own. Good luck. Good night. Christian, you came. No matter that I missed that discourse by an amorous theorist or theoretical amorist, now the best of all of them is here. The air is sweet. Evening is come. We are alone. That seat beckons. Talk. I'll listen. <laughs> Shall we sit? <laughs> I love you. So, your theme. Embroider it, weave gorgeous tapestries. Love you. <laughs> Rhapsodies. I love you so much. So much. Good. And then? And then, uh, I would, I would be glad if you loved me too. Say that you love me too. You offer skimmed milk when I ask for cream. <laughs> Tell me how you love me. Very much. Turn your theme into a loving labyrinth. Devote your discourse to the true platonic note. Oh, God, I want to kiss your throat. Really? I love you. That again. Oh, no, I do not love you. Good. I adore you. Oh, this is too much. Forgive me, Roxanne. I I'm so in love, I'm growing stupid. I agree. <laughs> displeases me as much as though you were growing ugly. Listen. Retrieve your scattered eloquence, otherwise leave. But I, I... I know you love me. Good night. Stay! Wait! Listen. What I have to say is... That you adore me. Good. Now go away. Can love only be sincere when it's insincere? When it's dressed up in fine words, coldly chosen? My love is beyond words. Only that one word, love, is left. All I can say is I love you, love you, love you. And how many times in my life do you think I have heard that heart of owl? As articulate as a tomcat howling for a temporary mate. <laughs> All of these fine Paris aristocrats possess no tongue but that of courting cats. They think their money, finery, and rank so irresistible that a girl should thank them for their leers and lecherous intent, that what they call love is a compliment when all it means is, well, you know what it means. <laughs> I know it all, young as I am, the scenes with marquises and vicomtes breathing wine and urgency and hoarseness. Oh, be mine. I need you so I want you. And now you, my lovely Grecian hero. Oh. You too despise the soul's language. All you can say is... I love you. Oh, go away. Please. Great success. Congratulations. <laughs> For God's sake, help me. Ah, no. I shall die here and now, if here and now I find no way to make her love me again. You idiot, how do you expect me here and now to... Wait! Look, see. Her window. I shall die! Shh! Die. <clears throat> A cloudy sky. Yes, yes, will you? To re 
reinstate you may not be easy, but still, we have to try. Stand there. In front of the balcony. <laughs> while I stand underneath and whisper the right words. Oh, but I... Ah, welcome back, my unmelodious birds. You've serenaded, Mont Fleury? Good. Now, go to the end of that street there, all of you. Wait for approaching feet. If anyone comes, play something. Wait! A sad tune for a man. Don't demonstrate. <laughs> and for a woman, something shrill and sweet. All right, all right, be off of you. Now, how do we start? Call her. Roxanne! Hi, <laughs> softly, sweetly. Roxanne? Was somebody calling? Me, I. Who? Chris John. So? <laughs> I have to talk to you. You've nothing to say to me. Oh, please, please. It's clear that you love me no longer. Such heresies. Such heresies. Such just slanders. Such unjust slanders. Divinities. Oh, you divinities. Whose name is justice. Whose name is justice. Witness that I love. Witness that I love. More than mere words. More than mere words. Can bear the burden of. Can bear the burden of. Better. <laughs> love. That I had thought a quiet child. That I had thought a quiet child. Discloses moods. Discloses moods. So intemperate wild. and wild. He crushes my cradling. He crushes my cradling. <laughs> Cradling heart. Quite excellent. But since you mentioned doubt, why do your words come so haltingly out? Tonight you hesitate so strangely. Why? I, 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 good question. And my answer is, each word gropes through this darkness looking for your light. If that were really so, my own words would limp just like yours. Since your words fall, they yield to gravity. Mine rise and have to fight it. Am I so far above you still? So far, I fear that one hard word could kill, crushing my heart like a stone. Then I'll come down to you. No. But I want to see you. Oh, stand on that bench there. No. Such a vehement no. What is the matter? To hold. In my hand, such exquisite joy, I dare not let go this precious chance to speak to you unseen. Unseen, yes. A disembodied spirit, clean of the clogs of accident and decay. If ever, oh, if ever, I was eloquent. You were very eloquent. You have never heard, till now, my true heart truly speaking. Why not? Because of the fear that you might laugh at me. Laugh at you, why? because of the unworthiness of a fool, an insufficiency that seeks to clothe itself in a sunset of words. You have never spoken like this, never before. Your very voice is changed. <laughs> Stale words, what are they worth? A moment comes, and God help those for whom it never comes, when love of such nobility possesses this shaking frame that even the sweetest word, the ultimate honey, stings like vinegar. If so, what, when the moment comes for both of us? What words will you say? In that most precious instant, I shall take all words that ever were, or weren't, or could, or couldn't be, and in mad armfuls, not bouquets, I'll smother you in them. Oh, God, how I love you. I choke with love, I stumble in madness, tread a fiery region where reason is consumed. I love you beyond the limits that love sets himself. I love, I love. Your name, Roxanne, swings like a brazen bell, telling itself, Roxanne, Roxanne, in my heart's belfry. And I tremble, Roxanne, Roxanne with each gold, bronze, silver reverberation. Now I swing down the rope to Earth's level and revel in each small thing, trivial, forgettable, unforgettable by me that ever you do or did. Yes, this is love. Each glance of your eyes begets some new virtue, new courage. Oh, do you see this, feel it, understand? Can you feel 
my heart rising toward you in this intense stillness whose perfumed velvet wraps us close. This night I speak. You listen. Never in my most reckless, unreasonable dream have I hoped for this. Now, I can gladly die, knowing that it is my words that make you tremble in the blue shadow of the tree. For it is true, you do tremble. You do. Yes, I do tremble, and I weep, and I am yours. I love. You have made me. Ah. To die, death is all I need now. After this summit gained, I ask one thing. A kiss. What? Oh. Oh. <laughs> you asked for something? Too quick, too soon. You got her into this state. Why shouldn't I get some benefit? <laughs> it's true, I did ask, but I was too impetuous. I was hurled into it. You ask no more than that. No more. No. Yes. No. More is no more than a void and nothingness. I ask too much. I ask you to rebuff my importunity. Why? Why? Enough! Be quiet, Christian! What are you saying? <laughs> myself was being angry with myself. <laughs> I said, be quiet, Krishna! That was rude, I suppose. <laughs> Someone's coming! By the sound of it, a woman and a man. <laughs> oh, I see what they mean. A priest. <laughs> what? Diogenes back from the dead, looking for honesty? No, sir. Uh, uh, the name is... Uh... Madame Robin! Here's a damned nuisance! You seem to have uh, gone off your track, Father. Go back, that way, turn right, then keep right, then right again. Always to the right. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. I'll pray for you. Do. Get that kiss for me. No. That kiss for me. No. Sooner or later. Sooner or later. Yes, it has to be. But I must be the agent of her, yes. Has he gone? Are you there? Yes. Oh, we were speaking of a... Of a kiss. How shall we define a kiss? <laughs> the sacrament of a vow. The very O of the word love on the expectant lips. Eternity in the instant the bee sips. The secret whisper from love's breathing heart, bestowed not on the ear, but poured through lips apart. Enough. So noble a thing. Come. You heard what she said? Taste your flower. Get up there. Let me inhale that whisper from your lips. Now what in hell's name are you waiting for? I'm not sure now really is the right time. <laughs> Mount animal. Oh. <laughs> Roxanne. Hmm. It appears he's at his banquet, the banquet I prepared. Still. I'm spared one crumb, I suppose, one wishbone. And this is the knowledge that it is my words that she kisses and not his lips. So let's be cheerful then. Oh, it's that capuchin again. Hold there! Yes! Who is it? Uh, Cyrano. Is Krista up there by any chance? Cyrano! Ah, that capuchin is here again. Something for you, Roxanne. You'd best come down. <laughs> Madame Robin is here. I have it on very good authority. Roland? Robin. I thought you said Roland. Robin! There! 
I see. B, not L. It wasn't very clear before. One letter makes such a difference. How do you know I have a letter? Oh, I see, I see. A letter? For Madame Robin. I am she. A very noble lord gave it to me to give to you. To Guise? He dares. He won't dare anymore, not now. Some holy matter, I don't doubt. Uh, Father, there's a theological point I need your wits to ravel out. Roxanne, I am here in the convent as I said I would be. I am sending this by an old sheep-headed monk <laughs> who naturally has not been told its contents. I must see you tonight. I must sincerely, etc., etc. <laughs> Father, this letter concerns you. Does it? Does it? So I'd better read it to you. Very well, very well. It's terrible. <clears throat> Mademoiselle, it seems his eminence the cardinal will have his way, whatever you say or do. That is why I send this note to you by a very holy, intelligent, discreet capuchin. Instruct him, please, to meet these my instructions, which are that he is at once in your house to perform the ceremonies of holy matrimony. <laughs> oh, this is tyrannical! Courage, daughter! His Grace the Cardinal demands the nuptials of you and Christian. This is hard news, I know. But all that you can do is resign yourself to the command of His Eminence, who sends his blessing and his wishes for much happiness. I end with my own good wishes, your humble friend, etc., etc. Who, who is the bridegroom? Oh, this is awful. You? The will of God is sometimes obscure. <laughs> it's me. I'm the bridegroom. Are you sure? Postscript. Give to the convent in my name 120 Louis, signed the same. Very worthy lord. Resign yourself, daughter. I am resigned. <laughs> De Guiche will come. For God's sake, hold him here. He mustn't enter before. Yeah, yeah. Father, how long will this take? Oh, five minutes, sir. Try to make it three. Ooh. In, in. I need fresh air. I also need to distract his lordship. How? Where? Think I have a plan? Ah, by the sound of it, a man. Very much a man in a minor key. Very well then. Assist me, tree. Musicians, musicians, come quick, I need you. Here, here. Go in that house there. Something important is going on. Attend, watch, listen. When it's done, play something, you know, appropriate. In, in. That blasted capuchin deliver. Damn this mask. I can't see. Ah! Oh, 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 I, I fell into a tree. <laughs> Where did you fall from, may I ask? The moon. The moon? <laughs> What time is it? Is he mad? What time? Country, day of the month, of the year. Oh, I'm dizzy, dazed, befuddled. Oh, oh, I fell. I have fallen. You wish to know where from? The moon, you said. The moon dropped like a bomb, and I don't mean that metaphorically. A second. Maybe a century. I lose all sense of time during my fall. I was in a kind of saffron-colored ball. <laughs> uh, what is this place on which I have tumbled? I had no choice hurtling through space on my point of arrival. Where am I? What? Ah! That face. <laughs> this is a mask. <laughs> Venice? A carnival? A lady is waiting for me. Ah! Now I know. Paris, where else could it be? Ah, 
Paris. So, this is where the ethereal typhoon has dumped me. What a voyage. Oh, sir, you can be sure there's a book in this. A perilous record of risks. Good. Now, if you'll excuse me. Oh, please, 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 sir. Oh. <laughs> you are impatient to be apprised of the creatures that live in the lunar caverns, hmm? <laughs> and to know the morphology of its cucurbitous rotundity. What I want now is to know how I got up there, my spatial invention. Oh, first of all, it has nothing to do with ornithology, stupid birds. <laughs> no, my uh, mode of spatial travel is painfully original. Mode, did I say? Uh, modes, I have invented uh, three techniques whereby to violate that blue virginity up there. Three? I uh, specify, ah. uh, uno, I uh, strip myself, nude as a candle, <laughs> place around that nudity a carapace covered with crystal vials of morning dew. <laughs> The sun suck up the dew <laughs> and suck me too. <laughs> That's what. Or I mount the machine uh, forged in the figure of a grasshopper, mm -hmm. uh, activated by a trigger that sets off successive charges of saltpeter. I jerk off into space. <laughs> That takes two. <laughs> Finally, I sit or stand upon an iron plate. In my hand, I clutch a magnet. This I throw and throw. It, the iron lurches after, as you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can do this indefinitely. <laughs> Three. But our time is up, and so, and so, and so marriage has been celebrated. What? Am I drunk or something? That voice, it's not. That nose, it is. At your service, Cyrano. You, he, clever mademoiselle. Baroness. My lord, I tied the knot you bade me tie. As I can see, you, Baroness, bid goodbye to your paint-fresh husband. Bid good why? Your regiment leaves tonight, sir. Be so good as to report at once. You mean for the war? That's what regiments usually leave for, my lady. But I understood the cadets were not going. They are and always were. Here is the order, sir. Pray deliver it. Oh, Christian. The wedding night is still a good way off. That thought disturbs me less than it should. <laughs> Your lips again. Mm. That's enough. That's enough. Come on. Let's go. Oh, you don't know how hard it is. I know. <laughs> Cyrano, take good care of him and make him write to me every day. Write to you, madame. I can promise you that. <laughs> This PBS show will return in a moment. I'm Neil Shapiro. Let me ask you a personal question. What are you doing on Saturday night? It's going to be a long night. True. And I don't particularly like the book I've started. Ah. You know what I mean? Um, do you mean you're staying in to watch Real 13? Well, our classic this Saturday is North by Northwest, starring Cary Grant and Eva Marie Saint. And after the classic, we need your help to program the shorts. You try to tell me that I'm irresistible? No, I'm trying to say all you have to do is go to real13.org and watch three short films. What the devil is that supposed to mean? It means you vote for your favorite, and the winner will be seen right here on Saturday night. Next up, our Real 13 indie, My Life Without Me, an award-winning drama starring Sarah Polly and Blondie's Deborah Harry. Is that what you want? Yeah! Who wouldn't want a great night of movies? Saturday at 9, it's North by Northwest. Then a short that you pick, 
and My Life Without Me. This week, will you join New York movie fans and watch Real 13? Sure, isn't everybody? The issues that matter to you, now on PBS. Friday nights at 8.30 on 13 and 13 HD. Great Performances is brought to you by the Irene Diamond Fund. This program is also made possible by the National Endowment for the Arts because a great nation deserves great art. Vivian Milstein, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Not wounded yet. No. I think they've gotten into the habit of missing me. Risking your life before breakfast to post a letter? Mad. Not, of course, that there is any breakfast. What must be done? Must be done. I promised his wife, as I must call her, that he'd speak to her by post. Look at him. <sighs> Starving to death. We all are. Yes, I know but he seems to show it more than most. If only that poor child could see him. Still handsome, though. <laughs> You'd better get some sleep. Oh, stop worrying so much. No, oh, no, I'm pretty careful when I cross the Spanish lines. I just wait until they're drunk. <laughs> what a mess. We're besieging Aris, and yet it's we who are doing the starving. And yet, you grin instead of looking grim, risking your life every day to send a letter. You're unnatural. What sort of a father and mother? Never mind. <laughs> Where are you going? To write another. <laughs> Poor devils. I know what their first words are going to be. God, I am so hungry. Come on, out of it. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yellow as saffron cake, my tongue. Cake? Who said cake? Bread before bullets. And I'm perfectly prepared to forego the butter. What's that? You chewing? Gunwalt. Fraud in the choicest axle grease. Why? You care for peace? No, you Cyrano! This noise is very distracting. <laughs> you, I see you have something on your mind. My stomach. We all suffer the same vacuity. Here. Feed your soul with Homer's Iliad. <laughs> Don't try to feed us with poetry. Fine words, but are no parsnips. Parsnips in a white sauce. <laughs> I don't much care for parsnips. Oh, good Lord, what am I saying? <laughs> I'm saying this. I'd rather die on pointed elegances, fine words, as you call them, saying a good thing for a good cause, rather than wail and moan and cry about my rumbling innards. I want to depart this life with honorable steel, piercing my heart and a piercing epigram upon my lips. But we're hungry. The whole world's hungry. You think only of yourselves. What? What is it? Where is it? Count de Guiche. Oh, Monsieur de Guiche is on his way. Makes me. Not so much as he makes me. You want him to see you suffering? Come on, try and look like you liked this famine. Piper, pipe us a Gascon melody. Good morning. Black looks as usual, eh? Right, gentlemen. This dumb insolence asks for punishment. I've a mind to leave that task to your captain. You, sir, find something fitting in the manual of military law. I'm afraid that's impossible. I pay my men for my own pocket, and I obey battle orders only. Indeed, well. You and they will soon have your chance of obedience. I know your prospective resentment. Jealousy. Your conduct under fire, apparently, doesn't compare with mine in any way. 
How many of you? Squatting on your haunches. Could have done the thing that I did yesterday. I lashed the Col de Bouqua out of the home, pouring my men on his in avalanches. I charged three times. But you failed to bring home your white scarf. It's already got around that story, has it? Tell us. When the third charge beckoned, and I was rallying my men, to my astonishment, I suddenly found that I was being thrust with a throng of fugitives into the enemy's lines. The Spaniard gives no quarter. I was in danger of being shot. So, what did I do? Thought quickly, got rid of the white scarf that marks my rank, and thus, anonymous, inconspicuous, blank, escaped and rallied my own force. Ah, oh, yes. It worked, from the brink of death to a crash of victory. Now, what do you think, my friend, of that little display of resourcefulness? This, a man's white plume, is his panache, his visible soul, not a thing to lend or spend. It is the shining badge of his scorn for his enemy. But the point is, my device was a success. Perhaps, but your courage and mine differ in this, monsieur. If I'd been present at that heroic affair, when you dropped your scarf, I'd have picked it up then and there and worn it myself. Always boasting. No, lend it to me tonight, and I'll lead the charge with your white scarf over my shoulder. Ah, oh, these large and vacuous gasconades. You're safe, as you know, with that offer. Our intelligence understands that that sector still lies in the enemy's hands. My scarf lies on the riverbank. The river is swept by their artillery. No one could ever reach that scarf alive. <laughs> <laughs> with my compliment. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this piece of white will do very well as a signal. A signal that, to tell the truth, I was hesitant about making. But now, gentlemen, no more hesitance. Look, there's a man there running away. And taking my signal with him, my pet Spanish spy. Spy. Yes. He tells his masters what I pay him to tell them. A traitor. I suppose so. But a very useful traitor. Now, what was it we were talking about? Ah, yes. You may want to know our marshal's plan. Uh, you might find it interesting. Last night, we saw the opportunity, with reasonable luck, of reprovisioning the army. In silence, covered by a good black knight, the marshal marched to Doulon, where our supplies are. Now, there's a very fair chance that he will reach them, but uh, to be sure he gets back in safety, he's taken an exceptionally large force with him. A good half the army is absent from the camp. Thank God the enemy don't know that. But they do. They do. They're going to attack us. Ah, my spy, a very reliable and pliable spy who tells me everything, asked where I would prefer the Spanish attack to be made. My reply was that he should go out, wait between the lines, and watch for my signal. That point should be the point of the Spanish advance. You mean? I mean, gentlemen, that this is all for you. Very well. Let's get ready. Another hour. Oh, good. As you doubtless all have understood, the aim is to gain time. We're not sure when the marshal will return. And to gain this time? Gentlemen, you will all be so very good as to lay down your lives. Would it be reasonable to call this, well, revenge? I won't pretend that I care the least damn about any of you. But. Since you all consider yourselves no end of fine, brave warriors, and uh, this is hard to do, admittedly, but leaving out the person, you're the obvious choice. 
If you want that to mean I serve my king by serving my own spleen, I will not contradict you. That's candid enough. May we offer you our thanks? <laughs> you, sir, whose bliss is to engage a hundred single-handed, ought to be rather looking forward to this. I am. Krishna. Roxanne. I know. I should like to say goodbye to her, to put my whole heart in a letter. I thought of that. <laughs> Let me see it. You really want to? Well, why not? I'm supposed to have written it. <laughs> what? Yes? Uh, this spot, this little circle, to me it looks very much like a tear. Oh, well, you know how it is. When a poet writes a poem, he's frequently moved by his own fiction. I admit I've written a moving letter. I tried not to be moved, but I was moved just a bit. <laughs> you mean to say you cry? Yes, I cry. And why not? Dropping a few tears, this is in the best heroic tradition. Ajax cried, Ulysses, Hector! To die, I suppose, is little enough, but never again to see the one we love, that's horrible. And the horrible bare truth is I, I never, we, never, you. Look at this! What is it? A coach and horses. What? Even a cap? It's coming from the enemy lines! Fire on it! No, wait! The coach is making signs! He's shouting something! On His Majesty's service! What? The king? Fall in! Line up! Hats off! Come on, you ragged lot! A royal reception! Drums at the ready! Begin! Morning. You, the king's service. The one and only king. Love. Oh, God in heaven. <laughs> you here, but why? The siege of yours has lasted too long. Darren, look at her. You can't stay here. Why not? Oh, what a journey it's been. <laughs> Thank you. A patrol very rudely shot at my coach. It looks, doesn't it, as though it's been magicked out of a pumpkin. You know, Cinderella. Good morning again. Why so sad, all of you? Cyrano, I'm terribly glad to see you. Roxanne, this is madness. How did you get through? Easy, really. All we had to do was trot along. If some Hidalgo or Don thrust in his head to know what was going on, I put on my best smile. And please, I don't mean to disparage the French, but really, I've never seen such courtesy such gallantry, bowing low or throwing a salute, they let us go. Didn't they ask where you were going? Often. And when I told them, well, the news would soften their ferocity even more. All I had to say when we were challenged was, I'm on my way to see my lover. They couldn't have been sweeter. They bowed and murmured, the vaya, senorita. But, Roxanne. I know, husband is what I should have said, of course. But that would have done no good. You don't seem to... What's the matter? Madame, you cannot stay here. You must go. Quickly, too. You must. At once. Christian, do you want me to go? There's the small matter of a battle. <laughs> Have your battle. I stay here with my love, my husband. If he dies, we die together. This sector of the line, it's doubtful whether anyone can survive. That's why he put us here. <laughs> I see. You want me to be a widow? I swear, I had no such... I swear, I am staying here. Call it a temporary madness. Besides, it's a new experience. You can smell perfume all over the camp. You'd be good enough to open your hand. But why? We lost the company flag. This will fly high, shedding perfume over the camp in its place. It's very small. Yes but it's genuine lace. I could die happy now. 
If only I had even a walnut climbing down inside. Ignoble to talk of food in the presence of so exquisite a lady. But I'd love some breakfast. A little pate, a cold bird, wine. Would you be good enough? Absurd, you think? It's all there in my coat. What, what? Partridges, pheasants, creme brulee, the lot. <laughs> you see my coach, Manan, you recognize him? A very precious man. Gentlemen! <laughs> The wine, the poultry, and the pastry, too. Ah! Distracted by their gallantry, they miss the galantine. Preoccupied with Venus's face and grace, they miss these objects of Diana's chase. This cushion is stuffed with pigeons. See? Oh! Oh! The handle of my whip is all pure pork. <laughs> Even if the rest of the army has to starve, at least the Gascons have a joint to carve before we're carved. <laughs> Why did you come? I'll tell you soon. Go while you can. No. Very well, then. Give me a musket. I am staying too. Spoken, sir, like a man. You're showing Gascon fortitude. I don't desert ladies in danger. Will you have something? I fight, sir, and I fast. This condemned man requires no breakfast. Hear that? A new recruit. He's one of us at last. <laughs> My pikemen are lined up. Accounted. Armed. Madame, will you inspect them with me? Charmed. Something to say, you say. Important. You'd better speak quickly. Listen, what? Uh, Roxanne is going to speak not of a letter, but of letters. Well, not just a few, but a lot. The time has come to open what was hid. You wrote a great deal more than you thought you did. What? I had the task of articulating for you. I didn't ask whether I should write or no. I just wrote without mentioning it. But in God's name, how? We're under siege. We are cut off totally. Well, before dawn, you see, it's easy enough. I'm able to cross the enemy lines. So, I see it now. I've written more than I thought. To be precise, how many times? Once a week, say? Twice? Three times? Four? Rather more. Every day? Yes, every day twice. <laughs> I see. They say there's only one thing that will make a man mad enough to... Shh. She's coming. Roxanne. And now at last, dear Christian. And now at last you can tell me why you risked... At last I can! Blame your letters, if I can speak of blame. That lyric flood from the battlefield. Not a day has passed without their burning up my day. A flame that blinded me at last to danger. So just for a bundle of love letters? Oh, no. You don't know your own genius. <laughs> yes, it's true. There once was an evening of jasmine, lilac, rose, when I began to adore you. Your soul arose in perfume to my window. The true you made itself known in a voice. But then that voice sang to me every day. I had no choice but to come running. But I, I read your letters, reread, re-reread them. Your words all golden petals, the flower that shed them your soul. A soul of fire with sincerity. The sincerity that came across then. Oh, my cross is the cross of my stupidity. My soul sinks to its knees from which I know your love will raise me. But the heart that lies crushed by love's burden cannot be raised. It cries, forgive me, dearest. Let me veil my eyes in anguish. Tell me how I can atone for the sin that lies upon me like a stone. The insult of loving you for your beauty alone. What do you love now? You, the essential you. 
the true free being hidden by that casual dress of flesh I loved you for at first. Oh, I can guess what torture it was for a great soul like yours to see love lavished on mere caricatures of your true self. The eyes, the lips, the hair. But then with wisdom, with most patient care, you showed me that in words, your words, the key lay that would lay bare your heart. I see that first fair specious image now no more. I don't like this one bit. What I loved before was a mere bubble. Now I love a soul. I'd rather be loved as people usually are, with a bit of body as well. Here then the crux. Henceforth I shall find distraction in your looks. Your beauty is a barrier to you. <laughs> if you were ugly, twisted all askew, dwarfish deformed, I feel I know I should be able to love you more. The greater good needs not the lesser good. It was good enough before. Tear off your beauty with a rough, rude hand. Learn an unwanted ugliness and see how my love shines. Ugly. Yes, I swear it, ugly. Leave me. Leave you? Just for a moment, I have some thinking to do. And you must warm my friends with a smile before they... Dear Christian. Dear, dear Christian. So, I know where I stand, you heard? She doesn't love me anymore. Stop it, Christian. It's you. She loves my soul. You are my soul. Too true. And you love her. I... I know. That too is true. Madly. More. Tell her. No. Why not? Look at me. Ah, yes. Ugly. Ugliness is what she wants. She wants me to be ugly. Yes, I heard. And you blame me if I bless the thought? But you mustn't believe it. You must not believe that she wishes you to be... Let any... her choose. Tell her everything. Not this cross, this gallows. Cyrano, look at me. I'm a non-entity cursed with a pretty face. Must I destroy your happiness for that? And this mere trickery of words that I have, because of that? Go back with her. Love her. You deserve it. Joy, you deserve it. God, I'm on the rack with being my own rival. Come. I want to be loved for what I am, comely and dumb or else not loved at all. <laughs> Can't you see? Clever as you are, that basic simplicity. As for our marriage, that was a fraud, clandestine, unrecorded, and, dear Lord, unconsummated. Two beds, both cold. Get thee behind me. It will hold till doomsday. After. This whole discussion is academic. We're both going to die. No, no, you must live. As for dying, that's my duty now. You're being obstinate for what I am or not at all. I'm going to see what's happening there. Talk to her. Let her choose. I know what her choice will be. You. I suppose I can hope. Roxanne! No. No! Yes? What is it? Sereno has something to say. Important. Important? I seem to have said something to upset him. Uh, I know what you said. Did you mean what you said, even if he were ugly? Even if he were... They started... Deformed, twisted, grotesque. How could he be anything but noble, sublime, great-souled? You'd still love him. All the more. My God, is it possible, after all? Possible? Roxanne? Listen to me. Cyrano! No! What? What's happening? 
I can never say it now. Finish. You were going to tell me something. Something, yes. Whatever it was doesn't matter now. Roxanne, Christian, this I swear because it's God's own truth. Was a great soul. Was? You said what? Ah! Ah! Christian! He was first over the parapet. The first shot got him. They're attacking! Come on, steady! Muskets, get him! Christian! Christian, I told her everything. It's you she loves. Roxanne! There's a new line! Fire! Genius, nobility, no end to his magnificence of spirit. Yes, Roxanne. Such depth of heart, such tenderness. Yes, Roxanne. And now, and now gone. You've forgiven me. I'm here. That has to mean I've forgiven you. Christian, was he really so... If you knew him. I didn't know him. I didn't particularly want to know him. That last letter of his, do you still wear it? Still Next... and forever, like a sacred relic. I'll never understand such a sterile devotion. But to me, he isn't really dead. It's as if we still meet in some special region Sustained only by love, not devotion, living love. Love between the living. Do you see much of the other man? Cyrano. Yes, he pays a weekly visit. Acts as my gazette, my court circular out on Saturdays. Under that tree, if the weather's fine, they set a chair for him. I wait with my embroidery. At four o'clock, the clock strikes. And on the last stroke, I hear his step and his... Stick tapping the stone steps. He's so regular, I never turn to see. First, he laughs at me for what he likes to call my Penelope web. And after, he retails the chronicles of the week. Oh, Lebray, Lebray, how's our friend? Not well. 
Not well at all. He's exaggerating. It's just as I say, just as I've always said, loneliness, wretchedness. He writes those satires of his, determined to make more and more enemies. He attacks false saints, false nobles, false heroes, plagiaristic poets. In fact, more or less everyone. That's no life for anyone. Everyone goes in terror of that sword of his. That's one thing no one dares touch him. That may be so. Oh, it isn't the violence I fear. It's this loneliness. As I said, it's hunger, poverty, ravity. This is the world. This is how the world goes. He takes what comes. Don't pity him too much. My Lord Don't Marshall. pity him, I say. He lives his life as he wants. He's one of those rare animals that have opted to be free. My Lord Jesus. I know. I have everything and he has nothing, save that one thing. Nevertheless, I think I'd be proud to shake him by the hand. Now, I have to go. I'll go with you as far as the gate. I think I envy him. Yes. Envy him. There's a kind of success which sickens like excess. When a man wins the big prizes, having no glaring sins to reproach himself with, filling the foreground up, he feels sinful nevertheless. Pride bloats into more pride. Power never rests. The ducal robe sweeps up the endless stare with a dry rustle of dead illusions, a sad whistle of regrets. I must say, the sentiment does you honor. Yes? Ah, the bread. Uh, permit us a brief word. It's true. No one dares attack your friend, at least not openly, but the hate grows, and hate will find its way. I think you ought to warn him. The other day at court, one of the haters said to me, De Bergerac may die, accidentally. I see. I hope you see. Tell him to stay at home, to be careful. Careful? <laughs> Whatever I say, he treads his own path. He's coming here today. All right, I'll warn him. Yes, but what is it? This man Ravino would like a word with you, madame. Very well, bring him to me. Poor man, his fortune's always in the descendant. What next, I wonder? Dear madame, your grace. First, tell your troubles, if troubles they are, to Monsieur the Bray. But madame, I'll I... I'll return. Uh, well, I suppose, well, after all, in any case, it's not the sort of thing that... No, not yet, anyhow. What? And I went to see him just now. Our friend, I mean. He was just coming out of his lodgings. I hurried on to meet him, but he was walking quickly. At the corner of the street, there's this upper window. He was passing under it. I wonder if it really could have been an accident. I wonder, but oh my God, a servant, a great hairy lout. He let a chunk of wood drop. A heavy log of wood fall. Fall? What are you trying to tell me? He was lying there. I ran up to him as quickly as I could. The great gash in his dead? Just about alive. Did you get a... Uh, a doctor came, yes. Yes, yes, out of charity. Oh, God, help him. We mustn't tell her. She mustn't know, not yet. Oh, God. If you'd seen him lying there, blood, bandages. <laughs> But you will now, of course. We must go, quickly. He's all by himself there. If he tries to get up, and he will, I know he will. He may, he may. Through the chapel! That's the shortest way! Monsieur Le Bray! I've never known him to be as late as this. Here he is, madame. Monsieur de Bergeron. Late for the first time, Cyrano, after 15 years. Forgive me, please. 
I was detained, I'm afraid. Well. By an unexpected visitor. <laughs> was it a tiresome visitor? Very tiresome. And you sent him away? For the time being. Uh, this is Saturday, I said, and on Saturdays I have a regular engagement. Do me the favor of returning in an hour or so. You'll have to wait some time. I shan't let you go before dark. It's just possible. I'm afraid I may have to go before it's dark. My apologies. You're neglecting your duty, Sarah. No, here is someone waiting to be teased. Ah, yes, sister. You of the beautiful, downcast eyes. I have something to confess. I ate meat again yesterday. Isn't that terrible? Terrible. And as a penance, you must come to the refectory later and have a nice big bowl of bouillon. I'll be there. You're becoming quite reasonable, monsieur. I'm going to astonish you. I'm going to let you pray for me. Look at her. Tonight, at Vespers. Struck absolutely dumb. You forgot one advantage of my calling, monsieur. I can pray without permission, and I will. Patient Penelope is weaving still. I wondered how long it would be before you said that. <laughs> the year unweaves her tapestry. Look at them. Such color. Perfect Venetian red. They're falling fast. They fall well. With a sort of panache. They bloom down in their last loveliness, disguising their fear of being dried and pounded to ash to mix with the common dust. They go in grace, making their fall appear like flying. You're melancholy today. Never. I'm not the melancholy sort. Very well, then. We'll let the leaves of the fall fall while you turn the leaves of my gazette. What's new at court? Uh, let me see, let me see. Sunday the 19th, His Majesty was ill after eating too much preserved ginger. Eight helpings, to be precise. The court's decree was that it was high treason so to injure the royal viscera. So there and then, the offending ginger was condemned to death. What else? Oh, Sunday the 20th. A bishop went to heaven. Or so it's believed. There's been as yet no announcement of his arrival. Uh, what else? Madame Datis's dog, a sort of a smaller, hairier Madame Datis, <laughs> was given an enema. Monsieur de Bergerac, that will do. Monday the 21st, nothing. Ligadmir has a new lover. Uh. Uh, Tuesday the 22nd, the entire court removed to Fontainebleau. No. Yes, uh, what is it? It's nothing. It's, it's nothing at all. I should be all right. It's just my old wound from Arras. My poor dear friend. Uh, it doesn't last long. Uh, it will go soon. There. Yeah. It's gone. We all of us have our old wounds. Mine is here on yellowing paper, blood stained, tear stained, hardly legible. His letter. Didn't you say that one day you'd let me read it? You want to? Yes, today, now. Take it then. I may open it? <laughs> open it, read it. Goodbye, Roxanne. For this is the last time I shall be able to write. Aloud. I have to die sometime today. My beloved, how heavy my heart is. And it is heavy too with so great a burden of love, love still, untold, perhaps unguessed at. Unprospected gold from love's new world, not to be mined. But now the hour of its shining forth is gone, all gone. Nevermore shall my eyes kiss the sight of you. 
the flight of your gestures. I think of one, the way you have of pushing back a strand of your hair from your forehead. And my heart wants to cry out. You read it in such a way. But now I can only cry goodbye, my dearest. In such a voice. Goodbye, my angel. My heart's treasure. My one love. A voice I know I am not hearing for the first time speaking such words. Never for one second has my heart been absent from your presence. And as the night deepens, the shadows of the next world start to close in on me. I shall be that one whose love, raging and blessing, like the sun that outlives all men, will live on and on beyond the sun's limits. How can you possibly read now in this lack of light? For all of 15 years, you have played the role of the old friend, affectionate troll, but never one hint of... Roxanne. So it was you. Oh, no, Roxanne, no, no, I no. might have known every time you spoke my name. Not I, Roxanne. It was you. I see through it all now, that generous imposture no, of I letters. Saw... It was you. No. It was always you. No. The mad, dear, foolish words. No. The voice in the night, you. Upon my honor. It was all and always you. I never loved you. You loved me. It was he who loved you. Even now, you love me. No. That no is not so strong as it was a second or two ago. No, no, my dear love, I never loved you. And all these 15 long years while you stayed silent, you knew, you knew his letter was stained by your tears, his, not his. His blood, though, stained and by his blood. And you never said, never hinted, never once. Why do you break your silence now? Oh, because I... I regret that I rudely interrupted my gazette. Saturday, the 26th, an hour before dinner, Monsieur de Bergerac was foully, ignobly, Murdered. Cyrano, what have they done to you? At Arras, I said I wanted to depart with honorable steel, piercing my heart and a piercing epigram upon my lips. That's what I said. But fate's a great buffoon. Look at me, ambushed, taken at the rear, in a gutter for a battlefield, my heroic foe, a scullion, his weapon, a mere fire log. My life has played a consistent tune. I've missed everything, even my death. They're going to pray now. Nymphs in your orison. Sister! No, don't Sister. go! When you come back, I may not be here. A little defunctive music. That's all I need now. You must live. I love you. No, don't say that. That doesn't come into the story. When the princess said, I love you, to the enchanted prince who was a toad or something, all of his ugliness melted away under the sunlight of those words. Your magic doesn't work. Love, you say. But as you see, I'm still the same. How can I ever forgive myself? It is I who have done this to you. Let no shred of blame cling to your silk. I never had much acquaintance with the sweetness of woman. My mother was, understandably, perhaps not pleased with what she'd produced. I had no sister. Later in manhood, I learned to fear the mistress with mockery in the tail of her eye. But God bless you for this forever and ever. I have had one friend different from the few others. A friend in a silken gown in my life. I never loved but one man in my life. Now I must lose him twice. The moon. There are great names up there. 
other friends. Socrates, Plato, Galileo, we are the Gascony cadets, Captain Castelgianua. It's a matter of the constitution of the elementary mass. Yes? The quiditas of the hick, eh? The testimony of Copernicus is worth considering on that particular point. Oh, no! <laughs> Philosopher and scientist, poet, musician, and duelist. Here lies Hercule Savigny de Cyrano de Bergerac. Nothing, everything, nothing again. Sunk now without trace. I have to leave you. I'm sorry, I can't stay. That lunar shaft is waiting to carry me away. I would not ask that you mourn any the less that good, brave Christian <laughs> blessed with handsomeness. But when the final cold sniffs at my heart and licks my bones, perhaps you might impart a double sense to your long obsequies and make those tears which have been wholly his, mine too, just a little, mine. My love, my only love. Not here. Not lying down. He's coming. He's coming. Already I feel myself being shod in marble, <laughs> gloved in lead. Let him come then. You shall find me on my feet, my sword in my hand. Cyrano! There he is, looking at me, grinning at my nose. Who is he to grin, that noseless one? What's that you say, useless? Useless? Ah, you have it wrong. You see, a man fights for far more than the mere hope of winning. Better, far better, to know that the fight is totally, irreparably, in vain. A hundred against, no, a thousand. And I recognize every one, every one of you, all my old enemies. Falsehood, compromise, prejudice, cowardice. You ask for my surrender? Oh, no, never, never. Are you there too? Stupidity? You above all others perhaps were predestined to get me in the end, but I'll fight on. I'll, I'll, I'll fight on. You take everything. The rose and the laurel too, take them and welcome. But in spite of you, there's one thing goes with me. When tonight I enter my last lodging, sweeping the bright stars from the blue threshold with my salute, a thing unstained, unsullied by the brute, broken nails of the world, by death, by doom, unfingered. See it there? A white plume over the basket, a diamond in the ash of the ultimate combustion. My panache. To find out more about this and other great performances programs, visit pbs.org. Cyrano is available on DVD for $24.99 plus shipping. To order, call 1-800-336-1917 or write to the address on your screen.